Hello and good morning to day 10. It's another Friday. And before we start, I actually have to make a little announcement for the YouTube progress in the future. I decided yesterday to not upload the vlog videos anymore on my YouTube channel because they it takes a lot of effort to upload this two hour long videos and they don't perform very well on, on YouTube. Can understand it because nobody wants to look every day for two hours into YouTube and just uh, see the live session again. You can de do this of course on Twitch. Here are the videos as well. So I won't upload them on YouTube anymore in future, but as uh, some kind of compensate that I would like to do a highlight video every Saturday or one video a week where I just make some kind of summary of the development progress or I would like to give out some tutorials if something cool was happening during the week. So we would change this that we have the live session still on Twitch and we still do the coding here for two hours every day but the video afterwards will not be uploaded to YouTube anymore just a small highlight video or is other video content once a week. So let us go on with uh, day 10 for today. What? Let's see what we have planned or what we can do today. First of all, we should look have a look into day 9 from yesterday. So what we did yesterday was we added a game state handler to our game, which actually handles the state of the game. We also added a unit state handler to our units which handles the state of the units with this both unit states and the game state we are able to do different animations and having different states in the game to to work with and uh, we will yeah work with them in future of course and we will adjust them accordingly and uh, yeah, they are a big part of the groundwork and the foundation of our work and so we can now actually start with the placement phase because the now the game knows that we are in the placement phase and therefore we needed this state machine and the different states of the game so let us just archive the card from yesterday it's finished for today i have planned to yeah we have the plan that we need a click placement cell um, <coughs> so we need a map click handler Click to place unit, drop the badger. We could also go on with the AI units placement. So I would just write that down. Uh, we can already say the stream was prepared. It's prepared, it's done. The other thing we will go on later. So let us just use the 10 minutes as usual to go over some stuff. I would like to see the discussion points, schedule time, different disciplines on game on how to handle milestones. Yeah, that's still open. We have to keep that in mind. What I would like to do today is I would like to check here. So that is what we did yesterday. We have the tile map. We have the data layer so what we need to have is a map click handler um, <clears throat> this one is quite complex but the priority for us is now very high because we needed to have it um, we need a handler um, who is capable of translating mouse clicks to sell clicks to actually move, place, or attack with units. This involving a lot of math to getting the right cells. And we need to display, we need to display the highlighted cells accordingly so for this this will be our input handler you can call it uh, for the map that we are able to actually click on the map and then we can actually 
give some commands to the different units, uh, which is of course depending on the state we are actually into. Um, then we have the army placement and the map objectives, the water surroundings we still have open as task. Uh, this is the enemy replacement. Afterwards, of course, we then have the place enemy army. Yeah, we need to have the place place own army. Let's say it's a two. <coughs> We need to have the possibility to place place our own army. I would also say we need to have an own army, own army object. So before before we can actually place an army, we need to have one. This is also something we need to think about and we need to implement before we can start there. I would go to the art deck. I would like to add new tile design. I already already worked on some new designs for the tiles. I would like to capture all old tiles and exchange them with the new design. This may require also a new uh, map loader creator script to have some variants for the foliage, etc. So what I would like to do here is uh, I would like to have, it's pretty low, but it's a pretty big task. So what we need is, let us uh, firstly check out the assets. Let us take the preview. So we have some kinds of three different types of mountains. <coughs> I'm not sure if we can actually do something like that. We can. Then we actually can see the mountains here. Um, we need to redesign the mountains to new tile layout. This is cool. Oh, now, now it already has the picture for it. This, this quite awesome so we need another one with the so we have the mountains and we have desert and ice which are pretty simple i would say so we create the desert <laughs> the desert uh, yeah desert or a desert and then we need ice tile There we can put in the eye tile. What else do we have? We have two different grass tiles. We have uh, 
three tiles. A lot of them, actually. So the big question we will have in the future is if we actually redesign all the tiles, as you can see here. We have some different kinds of tiles, which had some variation for the map. What I would like to have is instead of having two different tiles like these, I would like to have just one tile, which is uh, adding the variance in Godot itself by a creation script, where we do some randomizing and have some layers where we put in the randomized foliage but let us just go on with the different tiles we have here to just finish this this is something i'm not sure if we are working on that on stream or if i do this in my free time because yeah, actually i like to have the coding ongoing on the stream and uh, I'm not that comfortable in uh, the graphic design and that's why I would actually do it in my free time to having more silence for it. But as you can see, it's quite a lot of tiles we actually have. We need to redesign if we want to make a new map layout for it. Oh, sorry. Wrong click. Tannen, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are also quite a lot. And lastly, we have a visa. So let me just drop it there. So this is a hero card then for our art design. What we have not done is, why wasn't that added to them? Mm, three tiles, select. Okay, my approach was not right. I would, of course, wanted to have them all as subcards of the hero card. How oh, can we do this? So I think now it's done. Yeah, so we have the different heights, but I like to look them also here. It's quite nice. So this is a ticket we now have for our art design, just to have some <laughs> different tickets in the future. So we actually can work on different uh, aspects of the game. Um, I'm not sure when and where we do this, but as you can see, the backlog gets bigger and bigger. So let us take a look at our plan for today. We would like to improve still the viewport on the placement. Um, I was working on that yesterday after the stream a little bit and uh, I will show you the actual state of the map. So in the actual state of the map, when we started up, we are now centered on the placement zone. And as you can see, this is working quite good here. We can again uh, start up our first tutorial mission, which is map one, to check how it's looking there. So this is also uh, pretty much uh, centered in the right zoom. What I would like to add, or the thing we are missing right now is, if the placement zone is quite big, 
as it's as it is on our mushroom map what i would like to do is i would like to adjust the zoom that all cells fit into the viewport so for that we need to go to our camera now for our map script and see where i have done the placement here i have done the placement then i have created the min position of the cell and then we returning the min position that we do in the placement state and then we say we move the camera to the position we calculated but instead of doing this here what i would like to do is to introduce another function where we can say map camera set before we start to code i wanted to look up one thing so in godot we have gd script coding coding guidelines Or better said the conventions and uh, gd script is uh, preferring a style and i would like to check it out because i always have the problem when i'm writing code that we have different styles of uh, underscores or camel case and stuff like that and i would like to stick to the to the uh, guidelines which godot uh, is actually advising so let us just just quickly check it so the qu the class names should be in camel case signals should be with underscores the exports is everything in one line actually the setters are in the next line private functions with start with underscore Also, the functions start with underscore. Also, private variables start with underscore. All variables are also underscored. And we always have two lines between the functions. We have two lines between signal. We have one line in this functions. And we have two lines before the function starts. And we have the class name as first. So, this is cool. So let us uh, do this accordingly. So we need two lines after there, two lines at the end. I mean, no, at the end it's just one line. <laughs> okay. So at the end it's one line. And then we would say to have min max position. And then we would use this accordingly. Back to the business, um, what we would like to do is I would have camera set placement viewport and then I would like to give the min max position something like that and we can these both out of here therefore we need set placement viewport in the app in the camera let's go over here set placement viewport and we get the middle point no we get min max position dictionary and what we need to do is we need to calculate the middle point which is calculate position by min max position uh, therefore we need to also adjust this and say middle 
Addition. Calculate. Middle. Position. Then we have a middle point. I also would like to have the viewport, which is to get viewport, viewport. And afterwards we would move to position, which is middle point, middle point and folds. So for now, let us just see if the map is still working. Yeah, we still have the middle point. So I just uh, moved some functions around. I haven't changed the logic right now. What we would do or would need to do is after the moving or before the moving, it's uh, actually, it's not a big deal of a difference, I would say. What we need to do is now we need to adjust the zoom accordingly. And for this, I would like to set a breakpoint here right now. Then we restart it and we just see that the middle point is there. The min max position. Our min position is 320 and 768. And we have somewhere the viewport. And the viewport says he has a position and he has a size. He has a position and he has a size. So with this we can calculate the left position of the viewport so let us do this var left or x yeah left point viewport and this is the viewport size minus the viewport get position dot x this should be our left point and our top point top point viewport would be the viewport dot size of course this is size x and this is size epsilon and this is also minus viewport get position epsilon so let us uh, give another shot. Now we should have a viewport point left point and a top point. And what we can see now is that we are actually not right because this one needs to be added, not subtracted middle point 10,000 Could that be? Could it be? Could it be? What is it? I need to calculate. I need to kill Krishna. It's the 10th, 18, minus 7, 8, 6, 320. Hmm, I would not say it. <clears throat> no, the top point view is this one. This is the middle point. This is the middle point. Yeah, so what do I have done wrong here is, of course, we want to have the middle point. Middle point X <coughs> and middle point Epsilon. Let's uh, check it again. So the left point we are at is this and this one is now wrong because it was right with the minus, I think. No, it's not. Why it's not? Because it's 
the other way around, of course. We add the middle point x minus Let me just check this thing out. I want to see just one thing. Um, size x divided by 2. Left point. So the left point should be now minus 6, 4. Because I take the middle point, which is x 512. And the viewport has the position of Size is yeah, of course, but it's in there. We are at the position seven hundred and four. which is max for the max. We are at the position 371. Yeah, so it was, I think it was right in the first place. We need the viewport, get position, epsilon, this is this position and since we are centered, I think we need to add half of the viewport. So we get six nine five let me see six nine five minus seven there is minus seventy three Minus seventy three. So let me just uh, do a quick check. So what I would like to do is the middle point dot epsilon minus seventy three. Just hard coded here to test something out. Yeah, that's actually what I would have liked because now, as you can see, this cell is in there. So what I've done in the calculator is what I have uh, calculated was we need the difference between the top point and the minimum. And by that, we need to scale it accordingly. It's a little bit complicated how to do it, or how the math is actually for it. I'm not totally sure for it, but what we need to do is difference top, difference left. So let us stick to left and top. 
And there we would like, as I have said, we would like to take the top point viewport minus the min dot epsilon. And for the top difference, we would pick the no, that was the top. Sorry. And for the left point viewport, we would take the left point, which is actually not right calculated. This is also viewport get position dot x plus viewport dot size dot x divided by two. Uh, start the debugger. So Okay, now I've done what I've done again. I have done the lift point and I wanted to have the min. Okay, so it was this, that one. It's the min max position, position dot min dot epsilon. And here it is the min max position dot min dot x. Let's restart it. <clears throat> and then we have the difference of 73 and we have a difference. So what I now would like to look is if difference left when we start with top is difference top is smaller than zero. Then we have a problem because now we know that something is not in our viewport. And therefore we need to adjust the zoom level. But I have actually no idea how we can actually make sure that the zoom is correct. The zoom is set for one and one. What we need to do is we need to zoom out a little bit. Better set by 7.3 pixel. So we need to cover 7.3 pixel. So what we need to calculate here is the right zoom level accordingly. We know that zoom level one is our actual size. And this is 648. What we would need is the size of calculator what we would need is 648 plus so what we need is 721 as the viewport size so let us just increase the camera where do I set the zoom there? Let us just say the zoom dot x equals zero dot nine. Then we restart it. And we go to the viewport. And then we don't have another size. Content scale size, fracture. Okay, we can't see that actually. Let us uh, kill the breakpoint. Okay, so it also didn't change anything. Why not? 
we do get here we do get here and then we have the uh, zoom step let's see let's see member self zoom step max zoom 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 offset okay we can just do it by that oh, let's see. what i need to do of course is vector two zero dot nine zero dot nine now let us just run it sorry right this is not enough but as we can see we have now a zoom and what i would like to see is if the size was changed no the size is not changed 648 648 it's still this size so okay what i need to do here is i need to calculate the right zoom level <clears throat> and by that what we know is let me check up we want to have 7 20 pixel for epsilon um, expected and we actually have actually have 648 pixel for epsilon and we have a zoom we have a zoom of one so what we need to find out is the zoom and we know that one equals six four eight or better said we have six four eight is one zoom what we now could do is we could divide it by six four eight and multiply it by seven one Correct. Let me see if we have one divided by six four eight multiplied by seven one, then we get the bigger zoom. But we want to have I think what we need is we need to divide. No, the other way around. We need to divide six for eight divided by seven. And that should be our zoom level we would need. So what we need to do is new zoom is the viewport size dot epsilon plus difference the difference is a minus So we need a minus difference top divided by viewport size epsilon and we need to use brackets and then let us just quickly check if i get the same result for the new zoom we then get one no it's the other way around it's the actual viewport size dot epsilon divided by the new difference. And then we should get our new zoom. And then we can set the zoom to our new zoom. New zoom for the top level. So let us just remove the breakpoints and start the scene up. And as you can see, it looks much better, but it's still a little bit 
to less. So the question is, if the top point is calculated correctly, because the top point view is the position minus the viewport size divided by two. It should be right, but for me it seems like there is missing a little bit. How can that happen? That could be happen because we have on the map an initial draw a drawing position of 64. And I think we need to take this also into account. So then let's go back to the camera. And let us just test it if we say 64. No, by minus 64. Yeah, that, that looks much better. Now we are on the top of the tile. So yeah, we need to set this into account as well for the start drawing. So for this, I'm fine. And let us go back to the map. And then I would like to see the map one where we actually would have the same problem. So for now, I would say it's fixed. We can start now and we are on the actual right zoom to actually see every placement cell in our viewport. And the math isn't yet now very impressing. It's just a lot of code with a lot of variables we are doing here for the placement viewport and setting the zoom correctly. But I can live with it for now. <coughs> setting the zoom for epsilon outside of viewport. We would have to do the same for an X value if the X value would be out of the viewport, but we don't have actually an example for that. So we can write to do, we may have to do the same for the X if it is outside of viewport. We just command it here and leave it here right now. So to bring it all together and to make another edge case out of it, I would like to go to my project settings and would like to say, now we are going <laughs> to some kind of another solution, a resolution, and then we look if everything is working accordingly. So we go for 100 for this, and then let us check if the map is drawing correctly as well. But it seems good for me with this resolution as well. So this is cool because this just gives us This confirms us <laughs> that we have implemented the camera right and the resolution is actually working even if we change it, even if we go to full screen or things uh, like other resolutions. This is quite important because uh, different players will have different screens that will have different resolutions later on and therefore our tile engine and the camera for it should of course work with it. And I'm pretty happy with that because now we wouldn't go with the new resolution. I would expect that we can not go getting here because we don't have a difference. Um, let us see. We have a difference. Okay. Then I'm a, a little bit scared that it's not correctly. Because as you can see, in this case, it should not have a difference. So we need to debug why he says we have a difference top. So our calculation for difference top isn't correctly. This one says it's minus 37 because our viewport, let's check the viewport again. The viewport now has a size of 900. We have set it. 
the middle point the middle point is at thousand eighty eight and the min point is still on seven six eight. What we are doing in the top left point is we get the viewport position epsilon, which is two hundred forty five, and we add half of it. Which should be correct. 245, 450 is 684. So I think everything we would need to do is just to have it the other way around. Because then we have a difference top of this. That's right. For here, but the problem is now if we go back to the project setting and set it where it was, then it would also say that we won't have a difference top. And that's wrong because we know half of the tile is not in there. I can't understand it. Half of the tile would be 128. Let us go back with this one. And we would have a different top of 73. And this is half of the tile is 128, I would say. And therefore, we then have a different top Let me let me see it again. Difference top. Yeah, the difference top is then minus 128. Because we are missing half of the tile. And then we had minus 55. But I would guess that it's not enough to have the new zoom working. No, then we have again the problem. Of this and this was case the case because we need also this 64 taking into account yeah and then it's, it's that okay so what I'm doing here is we need half of the tile because we are talking about the middle tile and we have the the uh, start drawing position which we need to take into account so now the zoom is again adjusted accordingly and if we go back to our project settings and take it again to a resolution of 144 by 900 and we start it up again, there should be new zooming happening. Uh, we can check it. And we still have a zooming happening because he is saying the difference top is 190. So this is not correct. <coughs> Still not correct. Uh. Still not correct. It has to do something with the half of the tile and the start drawing map. There I'm pretty sure with. 
but at the moment I am not too sure why. So what I would expect is to not have any difference top on the on this resolution so at the moment we would not have but i would expect that we when we go back to the other resolution and we have a smaller screen size and a height and then i would expect that we have again a minus difference top but he's not saying that. Now we have in both cases no difference top. Uh, this is exhausting. And I don't understand it for. Because it can't be that it's saying no oh, this top point difference. What I'm doing there. What I try to calculate is the position of the top viewport of the camera. That's actually it. So what we need to do here is we need to divide the min max position from the top viewport and then we would see that we would have a difference in here when we change the resolution back to a bigger resolution then i would expect that there isn't a difference top and he has also the same difference top And this can't be. Because when we change our viewport to a new resolution. And we get the position and get the size out of it. And having the min max position. Which is still the same. For min epsilon then how on earth we could have the same difference top so let us focus on the top viewport we have 695 i restarted to verify it difference uh, the, the top 695 and if we go back to the other size We have also top viewport 695. And this can be. So there must be something wrong in the calculation where we are doing. So the position of the epsilon of the camera is there. It's the viewpoint, the position of 
this can actually be so i think what's wrong here is this one because this couldn't be the position what we need to have here is the middle point of x and the middle point so let us just think about it a little bit so what we're doing here is the middle point of our tile we have now in the middle where our camera is centered so the left point is minus half size of the viewport and the middle point is there minus half point of the viewport so let us check this out here there we now have, should have a difference in the calculation because we now should have the top left point so the left viewport point is minus 64 and this is 784 this looks much better for me now and <clears throat> if we change back our resolution to 900 accordingly and we then start it up we should see a big difference there yeah we do and what we now need to do what we now need to do is what we have did here already so this is right we go then there and we get a difference top which is in this case minus 130 which isn't correct because we need to it was right in the other way around we need to do this and then we have the top port and we see we have 130 pixel off therefore we shouldn't go into that that's correct and this one should be something like 130 pixel that could be if we now go back to our other settings which is this one we now fire this up and we also don't get here into the difference um, as you can see because we don't have a difference top we just have this four and this is the problem because of this 64 start drawing position we had earlier into it so what we need is we need to have a difference of 60. now we are going here and setting the zoom accordingly as we can see wrong tab sorry yeah and there we have this and this is also not right <coughs> because it's not it's this it's half of the tie size it's not a start drawing position it's half of the tie size where the problem came from okay so i think now we got it we now go into the zoom and setting the zoom accordingly to our difference we have in the camera viewpoint on this resolution now we set the resolution to a bigger resolution and there we shouldn't need to adjust the zoom because we are in the place and this is working so here we are staying on the zoom one level and when it's smaller then it's it so now finally it's working <clears throat> so let us go to codex pretty fast so this took me much longer but it was also as a bug and with two and uh, takes the distance between first and last cell and calculate the middle point is one thing left to is adjust the zoom in the cell viewport we have done this it's finished yippee <laughs> so where do we want to start next or go on i would place own army own army object so we need an army object or the enemy army object we are now let us just take a quick look our, at our game we are now in the phase of placement for our game and we have drawn the placement zone for us what i would like to do now is just take out the enemy placement zone and add the units accordingly so let us go to the placement state then we have the map create placement cells which is actually done on the map so what we can do here is we say map place enemy
just as placeholder. So then we go into the map and we go to the placement cells, which is here. And then we create a function place enemy for now. And we just pass the data here. We set a breakpoint and we fire up the game. We getting here already. Then we are seeing in our map data, we have a dictionary with the placement and then we have the blue player and the blue is uh, for our enemy. What we would do there is we would say for key in map data placement. As you can see, I always like to work with the debugger open in that because it makes it the coding pretty handy because now we are in the state where we can inspect our variables of the object and we can code. So what I also would like to do is instead of doing if key blue or if key is red, I would like to introduce a new variable, which is an enum. And therefore, I would do something like this. it. So I thought it was working like that. Let me just check the enum find. Uh, enum. There was the possibility to do it like that. Go dot enum. We just quickly check the enums. It was quite handy to work with enum. That's why I would like to do it. It's with that. Okay, so I just uh, used the wrong notation. I was pretty sure that this is working like that. So what we can do now is we can use this enum. And uh, don't having this something like a hard coded string here. So we would say in this case, self player. And in this case, we would say self AI. And so we have a constants for us and can use this for the different things. So the placement cell, in general, it's most likely the same code as we already have in the create placement cells. We just looping over our placement data, we check if the placement data is the player. We could also do this in this function and when then we don't need a place enemy function. I would say, yeah, let's think about that for a minute. But uh, what I would like to do is I would like to see how the placement was done in the original code. So we had the set AI team. We had the init challenge. We had check finish, grant rewards, set check loose, start player, init placement, start mission update to JSON, update JSON. Challenge modes, a challenge, create AI units. So this is how we created the AI units in the original one. So we had the available races, which is actually too interesting for us now. Then I had a unit list where I was getting all the unit, get all race unit IDs. And then we just had a unit list with a get and we drafted it to a draft units array and then we get the placement zone and then for each drafted unit we took the placement zone count. And we would like to implement the 
placement for our enemy, which is actually pretty simple because at the moment we don't have much units available. We have just our what is this? We just have our badger at the moment. So what we would like to do is at the moment we just say army enemy army is consisting of load no of badger instantiate and what we then would have to do is let me just check i had a function here already for the unit creation yeah create unit yeah we need the packet scene just the packet scene not the instantiate it's just this one So what we can do is we could take an array and then we have a function like splice or something like that or pop pop front entfernt und gibt das erste element so yeah so we would do create unit Now, first of all, we would need to get this cell. So the cell is var cell is grid get cell vector two placement cell x and placement cell epsilon passed it to int for safetyness and then we got our cell and then we can add the unit by get position and we can say the enemy army op front accordingly and then we would say before we go here if enemy army dot size enemy smaller than one we just return otherwise we take the cell and create the unit so that's actually it already let's start it up and then we get the problem and the enum values must be integers okay so then let's just work with the constants instead when the enum isn't working like that no problem then we're working with the constant layer is red and constant ai is blue then we can say instead of self works but we can also remove the self oh it's now yeah okay let me be so now what we have here is he wants to have a non-existent function on get position in base tie and because that's yeah that's what i'm saying i have too much uh, different coding styles i'm using so what we have done now is we have this but the placement isn't correctly Why isn't it? 
since we have moved it around. But this shouldn't be the case. Why is it like that? Go to the bed. Game object batch. 2D should be in the middle. Positioned. And open my tie because it's broken completely <laughs> let us just take out the scene I map give it this now let us see what's in wrong the time referencing to an old pixel position component which we don't need anymore Because we are using the place, the position out of it now. So we have the cell coordinate and we have the position set. So I'm a little bit shocked <laughs> why this is not working correctly because I actually would have guessed. Ah, I know, I know. Because we have added a state into the movement state. Everything's good. Everything is good. We have just a movement state created yesterday for the unit. And to make it happen, we implemented something like this to move it around. To just check if our movement state is actually working. <clears throat> and that's why also in the state machine we can actually the idle state just now let us just save the scene and now if we create it poo, so everything is good <laughs> he's now in the right position and on the right direction <clears throat> so the enemy army create placement whatever isn't quite uh, complicated at the moment because we don't have the needed objects what we just have is we have just in a unit because at the moment we just have one unit so let us create a second card and say uh, create a second unit um, to have a little bit more variance of units and test the code for multiple units I would like to add another unit this will also bring up some problems because we then need to see how we could handle the animations with different units will be quite cool so we need this as a ticket but for now it's not a problem because we have it working like that i would also say we have done creating an enemy army and we have also placed the enemy army for now even if it's pretty simple um so we have need what we need is what we need now or how to process on is the better question so we have a, an enemy unit we have multiple choices now how we can further implement stuff to our game 
the first thing or the first idea I would have is we could further improve the unit, which includes that the direction he is looking into should be the other way around, for example. We could add something like the health pool and uh, showing how much health this unit is actually having. This would be involving a little bit of uh, GUI uh, or interface design as well. We don't have at the moment. So this would open the path to interface design. We could, uh, on the other hand, uh, go on with the map handler. So if I'm moving my mouse around here, what I would like to have is I would highlight the tiles I'm hovering over. So we can see if the translation from our camera to map would in first place uh, work and on second place we can see if uh, yeah the math is, is working for that and we could see if the tiles are having the right borders and uh, are recognized uh, in the right way and the third path we could go for is to create our own army and place it but this would be also involving a click handler for the for the cells where to click so yes i would go on with the map so with the mouse handler for highlighting the tiles let us check let us just stop it for now so what we have right here is the map and in the map we currently have our state machine and the state machine is storing our current state and is processing the current state of it and updating it accordingly. So what we're then doing is we're having the map in the different states where we work with them. Also we have a process which is here processed. So let me see. So what I would like to add now is input. We need input in our states. So we go to our script state and we add a new function which is called input. And therefore, we get an event. So what this does is we now get a game state and yeah, we don't need it for now. We have our placement state. And in the state, placement state, we now have the possibility to input. But this is not correct. No, that, that's, that's not in the state. Okay, we want to have the map handler. So we need to implement it in a map, I would say. Um, let me just see, we need, first of all, I would like to rearrange the function because these are public functions and these are private functions. So, and what we would like to create is the input function on the map. 
what we then would need is on the map we need a new node which is the map mouse handler and then we need an on ready map mouse handler which is a node 2d for now and we say map mouse handle is the node and then we wouldn't even need it as a reference let me let me see. have the map mouse handler we can also have the input instead of being referenced no we don't need the reference here we don't need it i think we don't need it we just create a map mouse handler and then we create out of that an own branch scene in the tile map which we call map mouse handler and we go into this scene and we go into this tile map and we create a new script which is map mouse handler gd and then we put the map mouse handler gd to the script um then we open it and we remove the functions and call the input event function and pass the map mouse handler now needs to export a variable map which is actually having our map as a resource in the map we go into the map mouse handler and we say the map is having the map so what we would like to do now and it was right no i don't think that we need the map we need the grid i think we need the grid so what we need is the grid go back to the map and we take the grid data what we do now is we are moving the we want to listen to the mouse moving event event <coughs> and highlight the tiles accordingly to our mouse movement for this we would first need to check the event so we say if event is input event mouse motion then we know that we have mouse motion what we then would need is to get the event position so the mouse position is the event get position what we then would need is we would need to get a cell from the grid so we had the grid and we would say get cell and there we would pass the mouse position but this would only work if we had the middle point of the cell because the get cell function in the grid data is just checking the cell coordinates what we would need is to check if we are in the cell so this is a little bit more complicated now because we also have to, we have it to do with the hexagon tiles which are hexagon shaped and this makes the position a little bit more complicated so for this i would like to go into our original code and see how we have done it in the past so we also had the map click handler and we always had the function handle place click handle click so we have different actions we have different states clean state action state waiting state in our map click handler um clear fields handle skills so we have a grid helper for that so what we need now is the grid helper um this is this one 
and here is what the, where all the math is going on. <clears throat> and we now need the find method based on the position. This is what we actually need. So this is also now some code. This is the mathematics behind the grid. And it's all, as you can see, it's all the hex cord, it's the cube cord and stuff like that. We're doing a lot of normalized code and, and stuff here. Um, this is also some code we could very, very good test in uh, unit tests. This is excellent code for that because it's uh, pure mathematics and uh, there you can of course always check them. And I would strongly recommend to do this because if the grid calculations are wrong, in any place you will have a mess later on and uh, it's hard to debug. I know this from the original code. Um, the good thing is The good thing is that we have already this code here, so I know it works in the I know it work in the original version, and I also think the go dot version of the map click handler will be a little bit easier than the original version, because as you can see, what I have done here is I needed to get the target coordination and this is calling the get chords by event and the get chords by event is here removing the tile size and removing some kind of isometric size to get into the not pixel coordinates Instead, we are getting into the word coordinates in the original version. And then we could work with that. In the, in the Godot version, we have it a little bit more easy because we can work with the pixel coordinates. <coughs> I think. Uh, just uh, let me add the I think. Because we have to see if this is correct. So what I would expect for now is that we can leave out this function and instead we would just have the find function on the grid helper which f actually takes the grid and the coordinate so what we can now decide is if, if we also writing a grid helper function which is pretty much just a just all the hex mathematics as I have said. So we separate the code from the grid which is actually just storing the cells and then we have a, some kind of grid helper which is uh, doing all the other stuff or the mouse map handler. Mm. I'm a little bit unsure, but I would do it. So what we do is we create a new node to D and we name it grid helper. And we create a new script, which is called grid helper. And we attach the grid helper script to the grid helper. And then in the mouse map handler, we say on ready var grid helper and also go into the grid helper function and say class name is grid helper and then we can go back in the mouse handler and we say the grid damn grid helper equals grid helper so then we have this already and this is the grid helper node <clears throat> on ready. So what we can do then is or what we would expect is we then use the grid helper and say find and he's taking as a dependency the grid and it will get our mouse position. Or better said we can even make it more easy when we say 
the grid helper finds in our grid and gets the event position, which is actually the mouse position. So then we are going into the grid helper and we're removing these functions and say we have a find function and this requires a grid and it requires a position, which is a vector two. Then we can pass it. So let us check the original code for the find in the grid helper. We have somewhere the find function. which uh, returns a cell and has some more functions in it. So what I would just like to do, let's just copy it to the go dot. And there we can see already that we have to do it with different things. First of all, <laughs> We would need another function, which is pixel to hex. And it takes again in pixel chord, which is a vector two. So what we need to do then is we say pixel to hex and we pass over our position. So in the original version, we would have get back a hex coordinate. Um, I have named it because first we are we were in Java. <laughs> That's the first thing why we have here in an object. And the other thing is because it's easier to understand what we are doing here. Because as you can see, this function is working now with the tile size and with some mathematics. He's returning the hex round. The hex round is the cube, which is turning a hex cube. And then we are having a cube coordinate. And this is all the stuff I have implemented. And please don't ask me how everything is working here. Because <laughs> First, it's long time ago I've written that code for all the normalization, for all that code, for all that stuff. I, I know it was pain in the ass. And this is where you really need to be yeah, a little bit smart, I would say, maybe a little bit intelligent, because uh, this is how the, how the whole mathematics behind our tile map grid is working. And uh, I have well, I had found a very cool documentation about hexagon grids and tiles and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, created this by myself the time ago. But I am, will tell you the truth. I can say today, I don't think that I would be able to recreate it. So that's why we need to actually copy most of the stuff out of here and hoping and wishing that uh, it will work in go dot as well. So <clears throat> let us just go on. We need a size here. The size is the tile, which is the tile size divided by two. And this will be pain in the ass. I already know because the problem is we worked with the tile size of the tile and the tile size was here 0 0.5 for example. And this can already be the problem that it will not work for us because in the original code, I was working with the with the libgdx uh, measure system coordinates and not with pixel coordinates. And if we now want to work with pixel coordinates, I guess it will be a little, little, little bit more complicated. 
But nevertheless, we need to start somewhere. And therefore, I think we just go over it here right now. And we say in our new version, the tile size is 128. So then we have a variable which is called Q. This one is X, which is our pixel core dot X multiplied by 2 divided by 3 divided by 128. What this does is, I have no idea. I think it's taking the pixel coordinates of a third multiplied by 2 divided by 3 divided by the size. Okay. So we need to look what we get and debug it accordingly. <coughs> so maybe, and that's that what's uh, the thing I feared a lot. Uh, maybe we need to re-implement all that code in Godot and can't copy it because we have two different coordinate systems involved here. And if this is the case, it would be very, very pain in the ass because uh, then I would look have to look up how everything was working. So I already have a bad feeling about that. So return. Then we need the hex round function. Let's go here and see what hex round is doing. Round is creating a cube coordinate. It's taking Q and the Z. So let us just paste it over there and then the func x round and we take a q which is a float and we take an r which is also a float then we will have a hex to cube function which we give q and r and we will have a cube round function which we get a cube and then we will return a cube to hex function, which takes the cube. So therefore, we again need a lot of stuff. We now need the hex to cube function, which is this one. So the function is hex to cube. It's taking a Q, which is a float, and it's taking an R, which is a float. And then <coughs> it returns new cube coordinate, which is a vector three with Q, R, and minus Q, minus R. So we already know that the cube coordinate is a vector three. That's quite good. Then we need the cube round function, which is also returning cube. So the cube round is our cube, cube round, and therefore we need the function cube round. And we know that we get a cube, which is vector three. And then we have something like Rx is float round cube x var r epsilon is float round cube epsilon. So what I'm doing here is just translate the Java code to Godot and uh, hopefully Afterwards, it was, it's working in some way, or we could at least uh, 
work with it but we will see <clears throat> so then we need a variable which is saying the x difference and this is apps rx minus cube x then we need a epsilon difference which is apps r epsilon minus cube epsilon then we need a z diff which is apps r z minus cube z so and as i said i had a long long i had long problems with that in the original version because it's not that easy and it is very very important here that uh, you do the right stuff even if you copy because if there is one uh, wrong variable for example used in the wrong place then i can say you everything is not working so we need to take care if we copy everything correctly so what we are doing here now as i said i can't really explain what we are doing here right now <laughs> don't like it actually but i have to be it has to be <laughs> the truth here and it's uh What is disliking? Expect an end of the statement found boring instead. To expect an end of the statement and expression. So what is your problem with this line? <coughs> I have no idea. And then we return a new vector three, which is Rx, Rz, and R epsilon. And this is actually the cube chord function. So let us see what the else if is for a problem. Um, go dot for else if. How is else if condition written? Elif. Elif. Okay. So in go gt script, it's elif. So. That's what we needed. So now we have the cube function, the cube round function. This is returning as a cube. And last but not least, we then need the cube to hex function. So the cube to hex function is right here. And we also will copy over that one. And write cube, cube to hex function and it takes a cube coordinate which is a vector of three again at least we know this and then we are returning just a vector two out of it which is the cube dot x and the cube dot z dot epsilon and so what we have done there is we use the cube to doing the cube round and we converted it so we converted the hex we got with q and r to a cube then we rounded the cube and afterwards we converted the cube back to a hex and now we know that we get a hex field in the find position so this is our hex chord and the hex chord is in, in our case just uh, yeah just uh, vector two so that is what i was searching for well what we have done in the original version is we then took the hex coordinate and put it to the put it to a string value and on the grid then afterwards we took the grid get the get function which then took the strings and ret uh, returns us the right cell by the strings so what i am not sure right now is that this is not the position it should be the chord or what is it 
So here we are again. So hopefully we have done everything right. I have not, uh, I'm not too sure what we are actually get now in our hex position to return the grid get cell. So I would expect we would take the get cell and we would just give it the hex into it. So, but it's no problem that we don't know what we actually are getting here because we can now set a breakpoint here. And then we can see that we have here, for example, another type O because we have changed it to the underscore notation. And now everything is working. So what we can just do is we fire up the game. And of course we need the map scene to fire up. And then we try to move there somewhere. And I move the mouse <coughs> and now the breakpoint was already catching it. And what we can see now is we can now look at the variables and see what we what we are getting out and i have to say it looks pretty pretty good <laughs> so we have a position the position is from our event so this is the map position the mouse map position and this is 1260 pixel of x and the first entry was the one pixel of the epsilon when i moved my mouse into the window and it catched it and we get back from all our math here, the X with six and the epsilon with minus three. So in my case, I know already that this are not pixel coordinates, which is used by get cell. No, that's, that's right. It's the get cell cell chord. It's tile cell chord. So it's not a pixel position. Let us go into the tile. It's the cell coordinate. So this is already right, I would say. So the event is then getting us back a cell here, hopefully. And let us just go back. <coughs> What I would do now, lastly, we need to continue it on Monday because the time is already up. But what I would like to see here is <coughs> if we actually getting a cell back. This is the one thing I would like to see today. So let us go into the grid helper again and remove the breakpoint. We start up the game. I move into here. And what we see is we are getting a cell. It's the seven and minus three cell, and we have a cell. What we can now do, just to visualize if it's the right cell, what I would like to do is cell set mouse highlight. For that, we need to go into our tile. We have a highlight here, and we add another one. And it's a sprite to D. And we name it mouse highlight. And we need to add the assets um, misc highlight. And there is the texture. There's the texture. I would drag it in. And then we have this mouse highlight here. Then I would like to hide it. Then we go to the script. And then we say funk set show mouse highlight it's actually working as the other one as well and therefore we have an on ready function or mouse highlight which is any new which is just sprite in this case it's just the sprite td and it's uh, the mouse highlight and then we set the show how mouse highlight therefore we see mouse highlight and say show and we don't need the play or as the other one and that's actually it <clears throat> then we can go back into the map now we would go into the map handler and remove the breakpoint here then we would go into the map and then he says cell set mouse highlight 
non-existent function because we have named it set show mouse highlight. Okay, so what we can see now is the, he is setting the highlights, but he is not taking the viewport and the zoom into account and stuff like that. So, what is wrong? What's wrong is the position. So I will wrap it up for you as uh, this, the show ends today, it's 12 o'clock. So what we have done is we, we wrote a little grid helper, which helps us to find the right position of the grid by the mouse position of our coordinate. As we could saw with the, with the highlight on the map, is not taking into account how far we already are out of the map. So what the grid helper is actually doing right now is he marks our cells based on the 0.0, .0 coordinate and not on the viewport. So what I can quickly do is to just see if I'm right. What we would need to do is we would need to uh, command out all the move positions. Hopefully. And then we would have to set the camera, I would say, to fix top left. And then it would work a little bit. Not completely, but as you can see. And this is the problem with the grid helper I was uh, speaking of before, we, uh, this is why we had in the original version um, this function, which was called, let me just see if I find it very quickly, which was called get cards by event. And that we need to implement as well in our function. We need to first get the cards by the events and then we can take the target cards. But the difference is between these event coordinates and the target chords is that we need to adjust the event chords by our viewport size, zoom and offset. And then we get the right target chord back and with this we can then work on our time map. So this is what we need to do on Monday. So let me just check out for today, for today, let uh, the wrap up. It was day 10. We started with the map click handler. And what we need is it just the find method to viewport get chords by event original version. Um, the AI units were placed. So that we also we click to place this is what we need to do and this is stuff done so let the last thing we would like to do for today is twitch day 11 we started we start a new journey out of it oh okay, map click it. i would like to copy this over to day 11 hello 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 11 and then we paste it, day 11. And then I would say finalize our map clicks and start with placement. And for that, we need to do these things. Yeah, so have a nice weekend, guys. Um, I hope you liked this stream a little bit as I announced in front of the stream at the start of the stream today I will upload the vlog video to YouTube again but on Monday I won't do it anymore because they are don't performing that well and it's much too large content for just some YouTube videos so instead of that we will do some kind of highlight videos on YouTube only and the live coding sessions will still take place here on Twitch and it will still be 10 to 12 p.m. and it will still be two hours long and we will go on 
on day 11. So we start in the third week on Monday. And as you can see, we are getting more involved in our game, more into the more complicated stuff. But as you can see, we get things to work. And uh, it's I'm quite happy with the progress also this week. Um, of course, drawing the map was a bigger progress or better progress in the first week. And now we fiddled around already with a lot of details. Um, <clears throat> but I'm quite happy with everything we have done so far because we created the placement zones, we created some groundwork for the hex grid, we created some uh, units, groundwork, the state machine, the states itself, we did a lot of coding stuff. Maybe we will add a little bit more animation stuff and art stuff in the next week. So I will spread this a little bit in. If you would like to have it, just tell me about that. If you uh, wish some topics I cover in my streams or I would show you more in detail, please let me know somehow on Twitch, YouTube, Discord. You know all the links, you know everything. I'm here back again on Monday and I hope to see you. I'm looking forward and... Yeah, as I said, have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.